Hi everyone, it's Nicole and today I have a Lawn Fawn card share featuring the brand new Critters in the Burbs Coordinating Lawn Cuts dies. The Critters in the Burbs stamp set has been around for quite a while and they have just released a coordinating set of dies for this stamp set which I love. I love love when they come out with new dies for their past stamp sets. For my card today, I wanted to stamp my images so that they didn't have that black outline. Instead, I wanted them to look more like maybe a solid image would be, but that's not even quite what I mean. But I wanted them to be a watercolored type look without an outline, either an embossed outline or a black outline. So what I did was use some distress markers in mode lawn and oh my gosh, I think it was the frayed burlap, I believe, on the stamp, just outlining the tree trunk with the uh, frayed burlap and then the top with the mowed lawn distress marker. And then I'm filling in those areas with a damp, all pretty wet paintbrush there for the top of the tree. And just filling that in, pulling the color from the distress ink, stamped image and adding additional color with by stamping my distress pad onto my craft mat. Now before I paint the tree trunk I'm going to go ahead and let the top of the tree dry so that it doesn't bleed into each other and while I'm doing that I am going to stamp the cute tire on the swing. Again I used my distress, distress markers to add color to the stamp before stamping it on this Tim Holtz watercolor paper. And I use black soot for the tire and festive berries for the red string. I'm using my damp paintbrush again to pull that color from the outside stamped line as well as using additional color from the marker to fill in and to darken it up a little bit. I'm using a pretty fine tip paintbrush here, adding a little black from my marker onto the craft mat and just pulling in more color to darken that up. So once I, I've used all of that that I need, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and move it out of the way. And I'm working in sections so that they dry really well. I'm going to take that frayed burlap ink pad because I've let my tree trunk pretty much dry, I'm going to need more color than what I can pull from, from that outside stamped line. So I just pressed it onto my craft mat, added a little bit of water, and I'm painting in the tree trunk. I love the look of this. It's coloring without that, that outside line. And you could even make this a little bit more in depth by maybe adding additional colors for more shading and things like that. Once I have this all colored in, I will set this aside to dry again so that the tree trunk dries while I stamp some additional images. I'm going to be stamping the cute snail from the Critters in the Burbs stamp set. And I'm using a little spiced marmalade and I believe I the brown that I used for this part was maybe the gathered twigs. I'm not quite can't quite remember and I, I ended up blending it quite a bit. Working a little bit at a time. No, I think I used the frayed burlap again for this. Then I'll take I'll clean out my paintbrush and then color in the spiced marmalade. And I just felt like that wasn't quite dark enough. So what I ended up doing was taking some ripe persimmon and adding a little bit of that to the snail to really darken it up a bit. I'll do that here in a little bit. I am going to stamp the squirrel as well and color him in as well as the other little images. I did take the tumbled glass distress ink over a whole new sheet of Tim Holtz watercolor paper and just brushed it on really lightly. It's a light color anyway. 
I dampened my background first and then spread that on and I set it aside to dry because I need it here in a little bit for when I put my card together and so before I did the squirrel I thought I better go ahead and get my background colored and and get it drying so it's ready to go. Now the squirrel I'm using a couple of shades of brown and I think the squirrel turned out to be my favorite part of this card. I love the squirrel from this stamp set anyway but the way the inks dried on here just really has that great watercolored look. You can really see it in the up close images. Here's that bright persimmon that I dotted in there and then just kind of blended it in. And I like how it really darkened up the snail. When working with distress inks and, and watercoloring with them, you just want to make sure that you work in such a way that you let certain parts of your project dry before you move on, if that makes sense. That way you don't run the risk of having them run and drip or maybe blend where you don't want them to and things like that. So even though I may, had to, may have gone back and added additional color like I did with the snail, it worked really well to just let the snail dry while I worked on the squirrel and then go back and darken it up after it had initially dried. My first acorn there, I got way too much water and it smeared all over the place, so I went ahead and redid that using a little tea dye there in the frayed burlap. Now I thought the squirrel needed a little more color, so I'm using my brush tip of my marker to just draw in some shading and then using my wet or damp paintbrush blending that out a bit and that is where all that great watercolor look came in. Now this, the new dyes that match with Critters and the Burbs have, there's a dye for I think almost everything in this stamp set which I am so excited about and I needed to pop them apart because I hadn't done that yet. I like to use a little post-it tape and hold them in place when I run them through my Big Shot. Now the grass from Critters and the Burbs is great and I just stamped that with some mowed lawn distress ink along the bottom of my card here you can see. Then using a damp paintbrush I am going over that and blending it all out to give it the illusion of thick grass all along the border of my card. Very easy way to create some nice substantial grass for my cute little outdoor scene that I'm creating here. And I went ahead and didn't stamp it there behind my tree because I didn't need to, to do that since I'm going to place my tree trunk there. And the inside of the tire swing does not die cut out, so I did take a little tumbled glass and watercolor the center of the tire so that it looks like you can see through it to the background of the card. A little faded jeans on the bird so I can color him in. Added a little black for the eye. going to use this cute greeting. This is actually from the brand new Wish You Were Here 2 stamp set. It says Sending Smiles. And I use the, or I'm using the large stitched rectangle die. This is a four by six die, which is great for project life or pocket scrapbooking, but I love using it for card making. You can find some creative ways to use it in your cards. And I, I have used it several times for this one, it's going to be coming off of the side, so I just held it in place with some post-it tape, and it has that great stitched border along three sides of the panel for my card. Pop that up with a little foam adhesive. Because the majority of this card is, is paper, I love using foam adhesive to give it some depth and dimension without a ton of bulk. Add my tire swing. Most of the elements on my card are going to have a little foam adhesive to them. And I love that the way this card turned out, it really looks watercolored instead of stamped and then colored in, like you might get with a black outline. I love I like that look too, but for this one I really just wanted 
it to have the same color of outline as the color that I filled in. And this was a really easy way to do that. I'm going to continue to add the rest of the elements to my card using the foam adhesive. And I'm ready to add those finishing details. I'm going to use the black glaze pen from Sakura for the eye on the bird, the nose on the squirrel, and also the eyes on the snail. Just helps give some definition to those. Adding a little white gel pen onto the stomach area of the bird, just using a little, some little dots. And then I'll draw some little lines on the top of the acorn here. Hard to see here, but in the up close pictures, I think you can see it a little bit better. Added a little dot detail to the snail as well. Now, before I attach this watercolored panel to my card, I'm going to use a couple of thin strips of foam adhesive. I actually cut it in half, leaving a little area in between. And I'll go ahead and add the rest of my adhesive. But that little area between those two thin strips is for my Lawn Fawn trimmings twine. That will secure it in place so that it doesn't slide off the end of my card. Kind of gives it a nice little channel there to hold it in place. And then I'm going to tie it in a bow on the front. Trim off those ends. And then I did take a little glossy accents underneath the knot to hold that knot in place so that it didn't shift or move anywhere. Just put something heavy on it until it dries. Rounded the corners to match my stitched panel and my card is finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new Lawn Fawn Critters in the Burbs Lawn Cuts Dies. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Please subscribe for more weekly videos. Thanks for watching!